Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for attending after lunch. It's the last day, and uh, we are really pleased to see you all here now. Um, maybe you have noticed uh, we have made a slight uh, modification in the title of the presentation. Uh, when we when we begin, uh, we were just aiming to observe the intraday uh, effects, but as we uh, made some progress uh, after we apply for the event. Have some uh, significant process, and we begin to develop some high frequency indicators uh, using the uh, tick data, which is provided by a, a commercial data vendor. Uh, today's agenda first of all, I will talk briefly about uh, our team and who we are. Then uh, I will give some uh, details about high frequency indicators, why we choose such a subject, and uh, the details of our project. Then uh, we will talk about uh, the current state of the application, and uh, we will talk about the, our to-do list and work in progress. Then we will talk about our future plans uh, in, this, in this matter. Uh, who we are? Uh, we work for the Central Bank of the Republic of Turkey. Uh, this is an IT-centric uh, event, so for those of you who may not be familiar with central banks, uh, we are slightly different than the retail banks. Uh, each country has a central bank for sure, and uh, central banks are the policy makers, and they are primarily responsible for uh, steering the monetary and exchange rate policies in a country. And our, and our bank is responsible with the price stability, financial stability, exchange rate regime, uh, and printing and issuing banknotes, and operating the payment systems. We have a small team of three people. Uh, this is Emre Tokay. Uh, I'm the team leader of the big data team in the bank. And uh, my colleagues are here, my teammates are here. Uh, Kerem and Yamur are big data engineers. And as we proceed, they may give you some details. Uh, now we are with uh, Mr. Beshiroğlu, who is our solution architect in the integrator. So yeah, OK. Yeah. Uh, Hello, uh, my name is Sekere Beşiroğlu. I have been working more than 20 years in IT industry, uh, more than uh, seven years in big data. I am the lead architect uh, at Comtash. Uh, also, I am uh, instructor, Hortonworks instructor. Uh, I have uh, some certification, and I am big data analytics uh, teaching at uh, three universities in Istanbul. Uh, our company is the Comtash. Comtash is the one of the biggest system integrators in Turkey which has uh, 30 years experience in data and analytics uh, solution. We have four main solution areas. Uh, we have taken place in uh, Central Bank Turkey, uh, big data platform, establish uh, mainly architecture, configuration, installation, and integration fa uh, f phase, uh, namely LDAP and Kerberos authentication uh, integration. Okay. Uh, what are these high frequency indicators and how we decided this? Uh, we have a short story. In fact, uh, our first goal, as I mentioned in the beginning, was to observe uh, foreign exchange markets in real time. Uh, we were curious about some questions. Are there any patterns uh, regarding to specific time intervals during a working day? Uh, is there anything special uh, to observe before or after the closing hours of the uh, money markets throughout the working day? And uh, what does the difference between the uh, bid and ask prices tell us? Uh, well, uh, as you know, uh, we are working with tick data, and uh, this data is coming from a trading platform. Uh, we have uh, the trade offers uh, going on all the day. Sometimes when the market is busy, we have like 20 observations a second. So uh, for sure our bank is not a market maker or isn't doing any automated trading process, but uh, our goal is to uh, watch the, observe the market. Uh, we are not supervising or we are not trading, but uh, the, the developments, the improvements in the market tell the decision makers a few things about the things going on, the liquidity in the market. Uh, so to able to detect risks and take necessary policy measures, uh, we should move in a timely manner and provide our uh, bosses, our decision makers, with a toolbox. 
uh, our first goal was to uh, develop liquidity and risk indicators based on real-time tick data. And then we tried to visualize the observations for decision makers in real time. And finally, uh, our colleagues will work on uh, the findings in order to discover any possible intraday uh, seasonality effects. And throughout our uh, different experiments, we also try to uh, observe uh, the news flow and the correlated uh, trading moments together uh, throughout the day. Uh, first of all, we say project, but it wasn't actually a project. Uh, when we were, when uh, we begin to, uh, when we begin to uh, set up a data, big data cluster in the bank, we have detected three possible areas of usage. First one was web scraping and uh, was to work with online prices data. Uh, the other one was to work with uh, some batch data where volume does matter. And the last one was to uh, gain some experience on streaming analytics. And then we have set up a test cluster. Uh, our test cluster uh, was quite humble. Uh, we were working on, uh, on very humble servers. Uh, there were actually five nodes which has uh, 32 gigabytes of memory each and total uh, three terabytes of storage. And we have uh, HTTP installation uh, version 3.6.0.3. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.6.0.3. And it was not the latest version back then. Uh, but in the test cluster, uh, we, we have experienced some technical difficulties. Uh, there were mainly some uh, performance problems, some performance issues. Uh, since our hardware resources are not uh, sufficient for this project, we have some performance uh, difficulties with read indexing and uh, the uh, superset, you know, uh, it's still a uh, project going on and uh, still in incubating. Uh, that's why the maturity problems with superset has made some trouble. Then uh, we talked to our business guy, uh, f uh, to, to the colleagues in the business side. In fact, uh, we call this faces, but uh, you, may, you may take it like chapters of a story going on. Uh, we try to convince them to work on such a project. Uh, throughout this presentation, you will hear some statements like, we need more and we need it more again. This is because sin uh, while we made some progress and provide the uh, users with, uh, in the business side with some new uh, generation of uh, tools. They come to us with new requirements and uh, this uh, experimental work has uh, transformed into a project for us. So this is the uh, first uh, composition of components uh, we have uh, tried to use at the beginning. We, we get started with the TREP API. This is uh, the data source where the tick data comes from. Then uh, we use the uh, Apache Kafka component uh, in a, uh, for enabling the event queue there. Then we use Apache NiFi in order to orchestrate the data flow. Uh, MongoDB is for sure not one of the native uh, components of the stake. It's not related to HTTP, but we had MongoDB, and we used MongoDB to store the stick data. And finally, we have provided our users with uh, access to Apache Zeppelin, and uh, since Power BI is free for the desktop version, and there is a connector for Power BI, then we have made some experiments with them on Power BI. Thomson Reuters, which our bank is uh, subscribe to, uh, has an enterprise platform. It's called Trap. Uh, well, they provide us uh, a event queue and we collect the data as it's generated. And each financial instrument which is traded on this platform has a unique code. It is called RIC, uh, Reuters Instrument Code. And uh, we have uh, used the Java 
Java API uh, in order to consume the messages coming from this uh, platform. Then uh, for going on with messages, we used Apache Kafka, and I'd like to invite my teammate, Yamur has given you some specific information. Hi, uh, this is Yamur, and uh, I'm going to give you some details about how we move on with Apache Kafka and other components. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, we plan this application as a real-time application, streaming application, and we have a qu quite dense data flow, and it's uh, a high frequency data set. So we published the messages to a Kafka topic that uh, we have uh, on our test cluster, and uh, we planned as such, uh, so such such as we created a topic for each each instrument, and uh, after that we have set of Kafka topics that that are uh, that are storing our instrument mes uh, messages regarding instruments, different instruments, and. Uh, here you see many components like Apache NiFi, Apache Zeppelin, and Apache Kafka. Actually, we were trying to use as many components as we could and in order to gain experience and uh, to see what they are capable of. So <coughs> uh, we move on which Apache NiFi. Uh, and uh, the reason behind this, we have a flow that's running from our Java application to Apache Kafka. And we need to man we needed to manage this this flow. Uh, there is this Kafka consumer in Apache NiFi, and we consume Apache Kafka uh, using NiFi Kafka consumer component. And uh, our NiFi flow uh, uh, is ending on MongoDB, as you can see. Um, this is a simple flow. Uh, we consume Kafka and. Uh, print those messages to uh, MongoDB. As you can see, as, as, as I mentioned, we have uh, more than one Kafka topic, and therefore we have, we have more, than, uh, more than one NiFi flow, one NiFi flows, and we, we, could, we could use a, use a Java application to, to manage this, but uh, when we use a Java application to do this, we need to redeploy and redesign every time we have to uh, consume a new instrument code from TREP API. So uh, Apache NiFi eased our process very much. Thanks to NiFi, we could do it quite faster. And uh, after that, we persisted all our messages on MongoDB. First, uh, at the beginning, uh, we designed our application to write messages to Kafka in JSON format. So. Uh, since MongoDB supports this storing this file format, it's, it was easier for us. And uh, also, there is uh, MongoDB installed on our enterprise systems, so it, it's, 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 it was also an uh, easy task for us. And uh, we, know, we knew that the MongoDB was not, in, was not officially in HTTP stack, Hortonworks stack, but it was very useful for us to store data uh, because at that time, back then, uh, we we were we were thinking that our analysts could use the, uh, this uh, persistent data in MongoDB to analyze their uh, to make their analysis. But uh, as you as you will see, it, it was not sufficient for for us. And uh, after that, we uh, connect MongoDB via Apache Zeppelin and Mon uh, Power BI. Uh, uh, since one of our aim is to prevent shadow IT in our institution, Apache Zeppelin was a good choice because our, our analysts could log in to Apache Zeppelin and made their analysis using MongoDB connected connectors in Apache Zeppelin. It, you can also uh, connect uh, MongoDB using uh, GDBC connector as well. Here you can see some analysis may, uh, that was made on uh, Apache Zeppelin. And uh, as I mentioned, we also used Power BI in order to do some, uh, uh, prepare some visualizations. 
Previously, our analysts were using Excel to, uh, to make analysis. And uh, we, in Power BI, we also, uh, we also put tick data with financial news together in a dashboard, uh, as, as you see in, in the image. And, uh, but we needed more. It was not sufficient for us. Uh, our analysts needed more. Uh, they had to visualize data in real time. And uh, analysis uh, made on persisted data in MongoDB was not sufficient. So uh, although they appreciated our work, we needed to move on. Uh, and we noticed that uh, these last components are not, are not, uh, are not suitable for our real-time application, as you can imagine, easily. And we started phase two, actually chapter two. It's another story for us. Uh, here, we needed a database which was able to answer ad hoc queries for a limited window efficiently and store historic data and seamlessly integrate current data with the historic data and provide native integration with possible real-time visualiz visualization frameworks and provide native integration with Apache Kafka. So uh, that was Apache Druid. Druid uh, made us index our real-time data and store the historical data in HDFS. And uh, there is also possibility to query, query both real-time and uh, historic data uh, together. So thanks to these capabilities of Apache Druid, we addressed all aforementioned requirements. And back then, uh, uh, the the Druid version that, that we were using requires index, indexing tasks to achieve with uh, tranquility. Uh, for the next phases uh, that we will mention, we used some other techniques as well that we are going to explain you. And uh, now the time has come to visualize data with some tool. And there is this Apache superset. It's a, it has a native uh, integration with Apache Druid and freely available on Hortonworks service stack. Actually, it was, it was not easy to make superset run in our uh, test cluster because the version was uh, very old while we are doing this uh, application, while we are uh, doing this project. So we, need, we needed to dig into code level of Apache superset and fix them and need to uh, need to make it run. So we achieve this and do some visualizations on Apache superset, uh, like we visualize transaction count, we visualize bid ask prices and contributor distribution, and we also calculated uh, spread. Uh, superset is actually uh, not only provides uh, default aggregations, they, you can also able to uh, write your, your own custom aggregations. Uh, and on top of them, also you can ask, write some post aggregations uh, as well. So superset not only provides some uh, built-in functions to provide you a uh, visualization tool, but also you can do some, some simple analysis on that data as well. But uh, we needed more again, because we, we were facing with some reliable, reliability issues with Apache Druid, because we have shortage of memory in our test cluster. And due to this, we also having some performance, performance issues. And uh, also, our test cluster was not integrated to our enterprise systems. So we need to also uh, solve these problems as well. And Kerem uh, will going to explain you our story's next phases. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Kerem. As Yamur mentioned, uh, we managed to solve our problems. Uh, we implemented it, but uh, since we faced some issues, we thought that it would be a good idea to solve uh, things in an enterprise fashion. So uh, thankfully, uh, the progress that we had uh, so far was convincing enough for our managers, and we, we were able to start the procurement process. And uh, here you can see our prod migration. Um, after the uh, prod migration, uh, with our partners, we started it and installed on our uh, bank. Uh, 
we were then able to, for example, for the governance part, uh, we were able to see the lineage of data, the streaming data or, or the batch data residing on HDFS. Uh, we were able to see the whole lineage and also uh, all the LDAP and Kerberos integrations were uh, performed uh, as well. We, uh, had, we had spent quite a bit of time with in, uh, implementing the Kerberos process. Uh, I hope uh, most of you have the same issues with uh, implementing it. So after then, after the LDAP integrations and uh, being able to give uh, certain users certain uh, authorities, uh, like this select, uh, select um, let's say, authorizations, uh, we were able to use it in an enterprise fashion. And now, uh, after that, uh, we migrated our previous uh, implementation on the production cluster, and since uh, the versions that we're using in the test cluster were uh, 2.x, uh, we weren't uh, being, uh, we were not able to uh, benefit from the new uh, attributes of the projects, like uh, Apache Hive and Druid integration. Up to now, we were using Tranquility in order to index the streaming data uh, on Druid. But then uh, we saw that uh, Apache Hive and Druid uh, were integrated. Uh, so that we can query the data residing on uh, Hive and residing on Druid. So after setting up the production environment and started to feed the data, we realized that uh, we can make use of this uh, batch data and the real-time data, and so that we decided to uh, index using this integration. Uh, but the things uh, weren't quite uh, turned out to be as, as expected. We were able to index data uh, by just writing a create hive statement, but we weren't able to query it, but that was not a big issue since we were able to uh, query the root data source using Python. Uh, but uh, as it's the catchphrase of our presentation, we needed more. Since up to this point, you may have realized that uh, all the things, all the efforts that we have done is just to visualize data, uh, visualize the real-time data. But uh, our users uh, said that they were, uh, and this is the part where Emre is referring, uh, they asked us to develop a new type of uh, indicator in which uh, we were not able, we were not only supposed to show, but develop uh, a different kind. Uh, so we had to do our calculations in batches. <coughs> it was a windowed calculation. So the additional, calcula additional requirement was that uh, we were uh, supposed to show the outliers in a given period of time. So that we uh, chose, we chose the obvious cho choice uh, Apache Spark in order to uh, further analyze this uh, streaming data. So we uh, created this uh, third second window in a five second manner. And on each window, we calculated the outlier, outlier being the uh, the values that are two sigma outside the boundaries. So for each uh, window, we calculate the sigma values, the average values and the sigma values. And the outliers were then detected and we, uh, we counted the, the outliers. So after having calculated this, for each uh, five second time point, we were able to show the upper bound and lower bound. So this, this is what our analysts is uh, interested about. Since when you uh, have, for example, an economic news, which is either good or bad, the uh, spread between these ask and bid values opens. So the wider it is, the, uh, the more probable that it, it's something going on, which is, uh, which is important for economic purposes. So uh, to sum up, this is our current architecture uh, in a single shot. The trap, uh, trap event queue uh, is consumed by Java API, and this uh, application publishes its uh, data into first Kafka topic. This is the real-time uh, topic. And uh, the first part of the project directly consumes that real-time data uh, and indexes on the root data source, and then is being visualized uh, using superset. And for the windowed calculation that I just uh, mentioned, we feed this real-time Kafka topic into a Spark application and then uh, do the windowed calculation on this 
Kafka topic window. And uh, the rest process is the same as before. First to read and then superset for visualization. So uh, I know this is not much, but uh, this is just to show you what uh, the steaming data looks like. As you can see, as Emre said, uh, at some points, uh, we can see 20, 30 ticks per second. So, um, and this is the uh, window streaming. At each five seconds, the uh, average values, the sigma values, the outlier counts are calculated and published in a JSON manner to the Kafka topics. So uh, this is the visualization, this is the end uh, product, let's say, uh, of this project. This, uh, In fact, it will be actually data, but uh, for the you know, confidentiality uh, issue, we have matched the names of the banks. Yeah, uh, the one on the top right is the contributor count by R. So uh, this uh, steaming data is provided by different banks. They issue our sell and buy, uh, let's say, um, issue uh, their intent. Uh, so the counts are different, but we had to uh, hide the real names. Uh, the one on the top left is uh, for each, for every five seconds, we calculate the max and uh, max ask and bid prices and uh, visualize it uh, and. On the top left, uh, sorry, on the bottom left, we take the count. It is also an uh, important indicator uh, economically, since uh, if the intent of buying and selling increases, then this is uh, also an indicator that economically something is going on. And this one is the outlier dashboard, uh, which visualize, visualizes the output of the Spark application. Uh, for each uh, time window, we have uh, this outliers. <coughs> what we do here is uh, on the on the top part, we uh, calculate the upper and lower bounds, and uh, on the middle part, we uh, just count the outliers, and also. Uh, when you, uh, statistically, uh, when you use two sigmas, uh, there is a uh, expected value in terms of outliers. For example, for uh, 95 confidence interval, it is different. For 90% confidence interval, the expected value is different. And for the one that we used, we uh, just pointed the dashed expected value. And the ones that are above the expected values are going to be of importance for our economists. So the uh, bottom part is the expected and the uh, actual outlier percentage rather than count. So uh, here I hand uh, over Emre in order to explain the work in progress. Thank you. And uh, now finally we are concluding. Uh, we are implementing a few features at the moment. Uh, for example, now we are uh, calculating moving average, which is based on a 20-day window. Uh, and there is a volatility indicator, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, specified by our uh, economists. And uh, we are trying to calculate the average true range indicator as well. Those terms are quite financial. I'm sorry for boring you. But uh, we have some future plans. Before uh, mentioning the to-do list, we have learned some serious lessons from our work here. For example, uh, it's quite uh, good to observe that the Cloudera and the open source community is paying some serious effort on Druid because uh, we, s we think that Druid is quite cool and we are very happy with it. But uh, the same, we cannot repeat the same uh, things for Superset now. Superset is very functional. It's uh, it's very cute, but uh, for an enterprise usage, it may not be sufficient enough. Uh, in For uh, bigger institutions like central banks or other banks, we have many visualization tools like Tableau, ClickView, and they have some 
enterprise features which are not present at the moment uh, for superset. For example, uh, making an LDAP integration was quite difficult for us. It wasn't straightforward. Uh, we are uh, expecting that superset will also improve, uh, just like the root. And uh, for lessons for our team, for example, in the test cluster, uh, everything was good. We were uh, easily working with Kafka, but after Kerberos, everything went, you know, maybe you have some experience with Kerberos as well. Uh, it's not pleasant and smooth that way. Uh, in our to-do list, uh, we, are, we are considering to uh, procure a new subscription from uh, the uh, commercial vendor, uh, data vendor. Uh, they have a data set called matching data in which, they are, uh, in which there is some information about the volume of the trades and the trading prices, not only the bid and asks, uh, but the trading prices as well. Uh, we, have an also, uh, we, we also have a data set which is based on historical tick data. And since we begin our project, we are accumulating tick data day by day since the day we start. So we are trying to uh, combine historical tick data and the uh, data we are accumulating at the moment in the same uh, place. Uh, that's why uh, then uh, our uh, users uh, will hopefully be able to analyze tick data and the recent data together. Maybe they will apply some uh, conventional statistical methods or maybe ML in order to indicate if there is an intraday effect or not. Uh, that's why we are also exploring the uh, possible use cases of machine learning on this uh, historical and uh, recent tick data. Thank you for all for your patience and for your attendance. Uh, we, have, we have attended with the whole team and we are together. Uh, so if you have any questions or similar use cases, we are more than, we will be more than happy to answer you. Thank you, thank you all. Yes, please. Sorry? Are you on is it in, in virtualized uh, infrastructure or is it on? No, we are running on commodity servers. Yeah, okay. In fact, we were we get started with Hortonworks, but we are all cloud era now. So it's a little bit, you know, we have some question marks, but we have some answers here now. You didn't ask anyone for details. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah for details, we have a, a cluster uh, which consists of total eight nodes three master, four data nodes, or slave nodes, and one edge node. And we are trying to expand our cluster. I think that's the beauty of the commodity choice. Uh, next year, we will uh, make our edge nodes high available by adding one or two more. Um, at the moment, we, we've got like 20 users, uh, but we, have, uh, still, we, we still have some issues because our users, they're familiar with uh, their habits. Uh, I think you experience in Bank of England as well, right? They like Stata, they like MATLAB, uh, and the, yeah, SS, and the most recent thing is R for them. So we, we are still trying to convince them to code on Python and move on to the uh, cluster, but I think it's a process. We are, we are trying to do our best. For those uh, experimental uh, environments, uh, we have a conflict of interest with the security teams because all these tools or all these components are, are they're very well intended, are, they're open source, they're very cool, but uh, the security guys are always unhappy with some things in these components, so we are still struggling. Yeah, please. The number of events. Uh, well, uh, it's hard to tell. It's even hard to give an average number because uh, since um, the financial instruments which are trading uh, in terms of Turkish lira, 
uh, is very volatile. Um, and some, we have a seasonality effect throughout the year sometimes. For example, uh, in August, uh, we have some very uh, sudden movements in the markets. And uh, the average count was like 20 observations per second. And now it's, things are you know, more st stable now. And we have like five or six observations per second. But uh, uh, in fact of, uh, I'm sorry, in terms of, uh, sorry, wait. In terms of uh, size, uh, this is not a uh, big data volume. So I guess there isn't any more questions. So thank you for attending. Thanks for listening to us. Hope to see you around.